Hello, I'm Willie George. I want to welcome you to this edition of the Faith Roots Podcast. And if you've not subscribed to our YouTube channel, I hope you'll do that. And one more thing, and that is we have a a free email devotion that comes every day along with this podcast. And you can go to myfaithroots.com, sign up, get that sent to your house every day. Won't say anything more about it, but there you go. Ephesians 6.12, the armor of God, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. You know, there's a lot of, um, well, there are a lot of places in the church world where you'll never hear a word about dealing with demons, evil spirits, principalities and powers. You just won't hear anything about it. And I think the reason is because a lot of times people are more earthly minded and think um, only in terms of humans. And, uh, and, and we don't want to be so preoccupied with demons, evil spirits and fallen angels that that's all we think about. But you can't ignore them either. And, and, and actually, when you, when you have a healthy understanding of this subject, uh, you're able to deal with it effectively without being assessed by it. Uh, four classes of demonic spirits that are listed here all the time in the New Testament, several different lists. They, they vary in terms from time to time, but they, uh, they're essentially the same thing. And uh, the first group would be called principalities. It's from the Greek archas, A-R-C-H-A-S, meaning ancient ones. They are the highest ranking powers in the satanic hierarchy. And uh, what that means is that, that these, these demonic powers can actually control whole countries. Uh, that's what we see in the book of Daniel. There was a prince of the power of Persia. There was a prince of the power of Grecia. And these evil demonic princes ruled over an entire nation. And uh, so that's what you see. They are high ranking powers. Uh, they uh, are those that resist us. Uh, you, you can go from place to place, even here in America, and you can sense a darkness in certain areas. You, you can drive into a particular area and you say, you know what, there's something not right about this place. And, and what happens is these spirits love to be where they are revered, where they get attention, where people give them honor. And they can give, be given honor through sin, through fear, through mistaken beliefs, false religious systems give them honor. And you can feel that darkness <clears throat> when you get into those areas. The second class of these demonic beings are called powers, which is the Greek word exousia, which means delegated power. And the idea here is that they have been deputized to, to roam about and like a guerrilla force, uh, as opposed to a large military division that would be under a single united command. Uh, this group uh, operates on the edges, uh, like the French resistance in World War II. They blew up train tracks and, and locomotives, and uh, they sabotaged uh, things, tried to blow up bridges, all those kind of stuff. They, they weren't powerful enough to attack a Nazi uh, division head on, but they could hit and nip at the heels continually. That, that's really what's going on here. And you know, uh, if you've had any experience in walking with God at all, you know you have those kinds of attacks. They're not head-on frontal assaults. They're just these distracting things that irritate us, that divide our attention, that come at us from the side. And that's really what these powers are. They have delegated authority. And we've all been distracted by these kinds of things. The third group are called the rulers of the darkness of this age. And the Greek word for this is cosmocrateros, which means raw power. And uh, this class of evil spirits is comprised of rank and file entities who attack together in a single-minded assault. And you see an, uh, an illustration of this in Mark's Gospel, chapter 5, when we read about the maniac of Gadara who came running to Jesus and Jesus asked him, what is your name? Because he knew that the man was controlled by a demon. And, um, and I, I believe this is to a, an accurate way of assessing this. Nobody's possessed by thousands of devils. So they're possessed by one, but the one can bring a number of partners with him. And I, I believe that be, being the case. And so Jesus 
I asked the man the question, what is your name? He said, my name is Legion, for we are many. But there was one spokesman there. And uh, so uh, the possession is by one, but at the same time, he can bring many others with him. And, and Jesus talked about uh, an unclean spirit going out of a man. And once he's gone out, he comes back again to see if he can get back in. But he brings with him seven spirits more wicked than himself. But again, there's that one demon who comes. And so there's that one spirit who, who brings uh, a whole group. And they all have the same mind, same will. And that's what you see. They worked in this man to destroy him. And it, and it shows you something amazing about the human spirit. Here is this man who is possessed of uh, the devil. And uh, when the demons go out of him, they go into a herd of swine. There are a couple of thousand of these pigs. And immediately the swine run down the hill, jump off a cliff and into the Sea of Galilee. And uh, this is an amazing story because it shows you the awesome power of their influence. And yet there's this one man who contained all this power and, and, and he was not destroyed. He was, his life was miserable, but he wasn't destroyed like the hogs were. And uh, it is because a human spirit is such a powerful thing. Uh, Dr. Roy Hicks, who was a wonderful mentor to me, uh, he was the president of the uh, or the general superintendent of the Four Square Gospel Churches at one time, he said there was a young lady who came to him and asked him, uh, I, I believe I have a demon, but I don't want to be saved. Can I resist it? And I thought, well, now what's he going to say? She's going to say, you know, it's hopeless. He, he, he surprised me. He said, no, I told her, yes, you can. And she said, how? And he said, just disobey it. And so she said every morning when she got up, this spirit would tell her what to wear, what clothes to put on. I mean, it controlled her life. But she started disobeying. At first, it was very hard, but she started disobeying the voice that was dominating her life. And eventually, the thing left, and she ultimately got saved. Now, some people might argue with that idea, but, but the human will is a very, very powerful thing. But a lot of people could never resist that without the help of Christ. This woman was able to resist, and she just kept saying, no, 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 no. And that's really how demonic powers gain an entrance into our lives as we let down our will. We have no will to resist them. And so these demonic powers, the cosmocrateros, represent this armed force. Uh, they, they, it is a single-minded direct assault. That's what you see. Now, here's the fourth class. Wickedness in the heavenly places. And it's the word poneros, and it means uh, bad, vile, vicious, malevolent, impious, malignant, and these are uh, demonic beings that are in the heavenly theater of operations, heavenly places. I, I believe what they do, and I think they're fallen angels. Uh, some demonic powers are obviously not fallen angels. And, I, I, uh, you know, there are several different theological beliefs about that, and I won't go into that. Uh, but there are some demonic powers that are very clearly fallen angels. And uh, their assignment is to hinder the angels of God. And what we don't realize is in this atmosphere around this world, there are angels who are coming from the throne of God to deliver answers to prayer to God's people. And uh, you see this story in Daniel, how that Daniel had an angel was sent to him. It was the angel Gabriel who would, uh, was God's angel, God's special messenger angel, who was held up for 21 days until Michael the archangel came and helped him. And so Michael obviously is a great warrior angel. Gabriel was a messenger and the difference in power was very real. And so Michael got Gabriel through this uh, demonic attack and, and got him immediately into Daniel's presence with the answer. But Daniel, uh, Gabriel by himself was held up for 21 days. And so, uh, so there are demonic powers, fallen angels in the atmosphere that work to hinder the prayers of the saints and to hinder the angels of God from delivering those prayers. Now, for this reason, Satan is called the prince of the power of the air because he's operating on the surface of the earth, but also in the heavens, doing everything that he can do to hinder the angels of God from working on behalf of the people of God. I want to read to you from Ephesians chapter 1, and this is a prayer that the Apostle Paul prayed, and it may take on new meaning for you now that we know something about these four classes, because there are, in, in this passage, four classes of demonic powers that are listed. 
Here's what Paul said in Ephesians 1.15. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. All right, now here's what he prayed. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Now I want to stop right here. This is a great prayer. I would mark it and I would pray this prayer every day. This is a great prayer to pray for yourself. It's anointed of the Holy Spirit. You can't write a better prayer than this one. Your own prayers, uh, you, you, you can pray where you know certain things and where you have very specific requests, but if you're praying a general prayer for spiritual health, put this prayer to work for you. Put your name in the blank here and pray this for yourself. He said, pray that the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance and in the saints? What is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places? Now listen to this. Far above all principality, power, and might, and dominion, and every name that is named. Now, principality, power, might, and dominion, those are the four classes of evil spirits. Uh, powers, principalities, rulers of the darkness, this world, wicked spirits, and high places. Same thing. And so you can see the four classes listed in Ephesians 6, but here they're listed in Ephesians 1. And he said that Jesus is seated above them, but we are in Jesus, so we're seated above them. And he put all things under his feet. We are in the body of Christ. And even if you're the foot of the body of Christ, even if you're the soul of the foot of the body of Christ, you're still far above all principality and power. And he gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. I can tell you this. When you first begin to pray this prayer, you won't understand it. You won't understand what you're praying. It is not necessarily something you fully uh, understand. A lot of it has to do with the language that's used to describe the prayer. It doesn't make a lot of sense to you. But over time, it'll blow your mind. When the spirit of wisdom and revelation starts working in you, you'll start understanding this prayer. You'll catch the full meaning of it. And here's the main reason we pray this prayer. The reason we pray this prayer is that we realize where we are seated. We are not beneath demons and evil spirits. They are under us. And that's what he wanted to get across here. Well, that's all the time I have for today, but we're not done with this series, The Armor of God. Be sure to tune back in tomorrow and we'll go to the next round. See you then.